I was sitting at home in July 1969. Having just turned 19, I was feeling fine. My eyes were glued to a black and white TV. Beaming down from space was a real sight to see. Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, Apollo 11. When they set foot on the moon, I was in heaven. It wouldn't be too long, or so I thought, until I too could be an astronaut. But the decades went past with no innovation. Despite this, I lost none of my motivation. I've always been a dreamer, and optimism pays. So I registered the name, Virgin Galactic Airways. We worked to build our space line for 17 years. There were days filled with joy, and there were moments for tears. Finally, the team flew all the way to space, and I watched from the flight line, pride etched on my face. More tests were needed for commercial flights to begin. Mission specialists were assembled, and I was in. Beth, Colin, and Sarisha would join me on the flight. Unity 22, our journey was in sight. After completing our training in New Mexico from Spaceport America, we were ready to go. We kissed our loved ones farewell, then I climbed into my seat for the trip of a lifetime, an awe-inspiring feat. Mothership Eve carried us to a great height, then the spaceship dropped and the rocket was alight. We flew straight up, faster than the speed of sound, until the wonder of space was all around. Having dreamt about this moment for 50 years, we were weightless floating. I couldn't believe we were here. Nothing prepared me for seeing Earth from above. It was magical. My heart was filled with love. I delivered a message to all the kids watching too. If we can do this, imagine what you can do. I was once a child with a dream, and now it's came true, thanks to our team back at the spaceport. I couldn't help but laugh. I was the first person to successfully test my own spacecraft. After hugging our families, we took to the stage. Welcome to the dawn of a new space age. Now I've been to space, astronaut 001. But for humankind in space, the adventure's just begun. what he says before his dream comes true. Do not be embarrassed by your failures, learn from them and start again. Most necessary evils are far more evil than necessary. Luck is what happens when preparation meets opportunity. Business isn't about ties, suits and briefcases. It's about adventure. You get the idea. Every business, like a painting, operates according to its own rules. There are many ways to run a successful company. What works once may never work again. What everyone tells you never to do may just work, once. There are no rules. You don't learn to walk by following rules. You learn by doing, and by falling over. And it's because you fall over that you learn to save yourself from falling over. It's the greatest thrill in the world and it runs away screaming at the first sight of bullet points. To be successful, you have to be out there, you have to hit the ground running. In the same way that I tend to make up my mind about people within 30 seconds of meeting them, I also make up my mind about whether a business proposal excites me within about 30 seconds of looking at it. I rely far more on gut instinct than researching huge amounts of statistics. I have always believed that the way you treat your employees is the way they will treat your customers, and that people flourish when they are praised. Good brands reflect the histories of the time and the group of people that made them. They cannot be copied. They cannot be recycled. The best lesson I learned was to just do it. It doesn't matter what it is, or how hard it might seem. As the ancient Greek, Plato, said, the beginning is the most important part of any work. 